Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we come in this Eucharistic celebration asking our Lord Jesus Christ to teach us how to pray and to help us whenever we find it difficult to pray. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses, therefore, said to Joshua, Pick out certain men and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hur. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people, with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my eyes toward the mountains. When shall help come to me? My help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. not suffer your foot to sleep. May he slumber not who guards you. Indeed, he neither slumbers nor sleeps, the guardian of Israel. The Lord is your guardian. The Lord is your shade. He is beside you at your right hand. The sun shall not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard your coming and your going, both now and forever. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, 
which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reputation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. Alleluia. The Word of God is living and effective, discerning reflections and thoughts of the heart. Hallelujah, 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary. He said, there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared God nor respected any human being. And a widow in that town used to come to him and say, Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time, the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, while it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being, because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. We are gathered this Sunday morning to pray. Do you find it easy to pray at this time, 8 o'clock in the morning, on a Sunday? Baka ginising lang kayo ng asawa nyo o magsimba tayo. No? Baka ginising ka lang ng tatay at nanay mo. No? Do you find it easy or difficult to pray whenever you are at Mass? Jesus, in our gospel reading today, comes to us 
as a teacher of prayer. Tinuturuan po tayo ni Jesus magdasal. But as a teacher, He does not give us grades for prayer. Jesus did not come for the experts in prayer. In fact, Jesus came for those who find it difficult to pray. Hindi dumating si Jesus para sa mga taong magagaling na magdasal. Dumating si Jesus lalo na para sa mga taong nahihirapang magdasal. In our gospel reading today, Jesus reminds and teaches His disciples to pray without becoming weary. Patuloy lang magdasal kahit napapagod ka ng magdasal. This is a beautiful reminder to all of us not that Jesus will reward those who are very eager to pray or those who always pray, but Jesus came to help those who are tired of praying. Reminding them that, yes, I am aware that you are tired of praying. And I am here to help you at the very moment when you find it difficult to pray. So, our seating arrangement here at the church if you are in front, it doesn't mean that you are the experts in prayer. <laughs> or if you are at the back, oh, I am not an expert in prayer. Or if you are wearing a medal, if you are wearing a veil, if you are holding a prayer book, it doesn't mean that you are an expert in prayer. No one among us can claim for himself, I am an expert in prayer, and you are not. All of us need Jesus to help us in prayer. And prayer is not competition. Sometimes at parish, in our communities, we make prayers competitions. So, uh, we prayed 2,000 Hail Marys. Uh, the other group will say, we will double it. We will make it 4,000 Hail Marys. Prayer is not even a competition. Jesus comes to us. Not when we are able to pray, but He comes to us most specially when we find it difficult to pray. Jesus, in our gospel reading today, pays attention to this. That among the disciples, among the people that he is preaching to, there are those who find it difficult to pray. And he came not to judge them, not to reprimand them, but he came to help them and be a tender teacher of prayer to them. We have a beautiful image in our first reading today of this from the book of Exodus. When Moses was praying for Israel as they go into battle, God sent Aaron and her 
to raise up the hands of Moses who was already tired of praying. I think this is a beautiful image of Jesus. Jesus was sent by God the Father to lift up our hands whenever we are already tired of praying. So for those who among you who are already tired of praying, siguro po merong mga nakikinig sa online mass, lalo na yung mayroong malubhang sakit. Baka tanungin ninyo, Pangino ah, Father, ano pa po ba ang silbi ng magdasal? Napapagod na akong magdasal sapagkat hindi naman yata gumagaling ang sakit ko. Jesus is with you at that very moment when you say to Him, Lord, I am tired of praying. Baka isipin ninyo, iniwan ka na ni Jesus kapag pagod ka ng magdasal. Baliktad. Kung kailan pagod ka ng magdasal, lalong kasama mo si Jesus. When you are already tired of praying, Jesus does not abandon you. In fact, Jesus is particularly there for you when you say to Him, Lord, I am already tired of praying. Jesus lifts up your hands to the Father and helps you to pray. Our second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy gives us a beautiful suggestion. How can we pray in difficult moments? St. Paul teaches Timothy to use the Word of God, to use Holy Scriptures that is, according to St. Paul, capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Gamitin daw natin ang banal na kasulatan. Gamitin natin ang mga salita ng Diyos para magdasal. That is why for us, especially Catholics, we do not just read the Holy Scriptures, we do not just study the Holy Scriptures, we pray the Holy Scriptures. We do not just read and study the Bible, we pray the Bible. Tuwing binabasa po natin ang salita ng Diyos, para na rin tayong nagdarasal. At ito ang nagiging laman ng puso natin para manalangin at magnilay. And so I think the celebration is of the Mass is a beautiful setting of prayer. Huwag na ho kayong magsisi na nagsimba ho kayo ng ganito kaaga. Huwag niyo kong panghinayangan na gumising kayo ng maaga para sa misa na ito. At the beginning of this Mass, we listen to the Word of God. In fact, we even sing the Word of God in the responsorial psalm. And according to St. Paul, the Word of God will help us in prayer to find wisdom through salvation in faith in Jesus. After the liturgy of the Word, we will go to the liturgy of the Eucharist. And you will see in the liturgy of the Eucharist, 
it is not us praying. It is Jesus praying for us. Mamaya po, mananalangin tayo sa Eucharistia. Pero kung mapapansin po ninyo, hindi lamang tayo ang nagdarasal. Si Jesus ang nagdarasal sa Ama para sa atin. Lalo na para sa mga taong napapagod ng magdasal. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Eucharist, let the words that we have heard from Holy Scriptures be our material for prayer. Give us wisdom for prayer. And let the celebration of the Eucharist, the celebration of the body and blood of Jesus, be the strength for us. Because in the Eucharist, Jesus is praying for us. Amen. Please all stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We must pray continually and never lose heart. Our God will see justice done to His chosen ones who cry to Him day and night. Encouraged by this teaching of our Lord, let us come to the Father with our intercessions. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Pope, bishops, may proclaim the message, refute falsehood, correct error, and call to obedience. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That men and women in authority will respond generously to the poor and helpless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That judges and lawyers be guided by divine and natural law and act fairly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our private prayer may be simple, persistent, and regular. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer that the dead may be cleansed in the justice and mercy of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for all the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty God, judge of the living and the dead, accept the prayers we bring before you with the merciful compassion you revealed in the pierced heart of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please all be seated.
Please all stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. all need. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Thank you. 
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please all stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please all stand. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. We have already uh, opened the Blessed Souls Chapel inside the Manila Cathedral that is uh, towards your right. You will see a particular chapel there which is called the Blessed Souls Chapel. It is particularly reserved for our prayers for our faithful departed. So we have already opened this and you can go to that chapel and write the names of uh, our faithful departed so that he could offer masses for them. All of the names that are offered there will be included in all the mass intentions during the month of November. You can also light candles and offer prayers for the dead in that particular chapel. In front of that chapel, you can see on the altar an image of Our Lady, Refuge of Sinners. The image shows Our Lady leading the souls in purgatory to heaven. And so we ask for the intercession of Our Lady, especially for the repose of our faithful departed. Secondly, as Perhaps many of you already know, just last Thursday, the priests of the Archdiocese of Manila received their new appointments, their new assignments. We welcome to the Manila Cathedral our newly appointed rector. He is Monsignor Rolando de la Cruz. Monsignor Rolli. He is currently assigned as parish priest of San Fernando de Dilao Parish in Paco, Manila. And he is uh, appointed now as our new rector here at the Manila Cathedral. So we welcome Monsignor Rolli as the new rector of the Manila Cathedral. Together with him, who will be coming over here, is Father Marion Noel Bayaras or Father Bong. He already celebrates Mass here with us, especially on Mondays. He is my classmate, no Father Bong. And he is assigned here as attached priest. And while Monsignor Rolly is still on his sabbatical leave, Father Bong will uh, function as the administrator of the cathedral. I am assigned dito pa din po sa Manila Cathedral. So I received an appointment that I should remain here to help out in the Manila Cathedral. So whether you like it or not, you will still see me here at the Manila Cathedral and I will still be celebrating Masses here and helping out Father Bong and Monsignor Rolly. Father Reginald Malikdem, our current rector, received his new appointment as chaplain of Landmark Chapel, no? Mary Mother of Hope Chapel in Landmark in Makati, and also the newly built chapel in SM Makati. So from Manila, he will be transferred to Makati. And the transfers will happen on the last week of November. So he is still our rector here. So don't worry. We still have a few weeks with him. And you could say your farewell or goodbye to him. And we pray for all priests, especially in the Archdiocese of Manila, as 
all of us are transferred in the, the Archdiocese. We pray that our priests may continue to be faithful in their new mission, in their new assignments. Let us now stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you now and forever. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds now and forever. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace now and forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.